What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of New Pod here on NotFest.com. As always, I'm Joshua Toomey. That is Ro Coley. And this week on the episode, we have Jeremiah Mayhem of Concrete Dream coming up in a little bit. But uh, first, I need to ask Ro one question. And that question is, was there any new at Milwaukee Metal Fest? Ro? Um, there was. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, NU and NEW. Uh, as far as new, uh, like new metal is concerned, uh, I did see a band called. Hold on, I got to remember what they're called. Swollen Teeth. Okay, nice. Uh, I heard that they were produced by Sid from Slipknot. Yep. Um, all wore masks and everything like that, and it was uh, uh, much like uh, Jeremiah from uh, from Concrete Dream was saying. It was it was very much kind of this kind of trap metal kind of kind of vibe. Um, the thing I thought was funny was they, even their roadies and their techs all had masks on. So it's like, you really had no idea who anybody in the band was, <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, their, their set was pretty packed. It was super fucking heavy. Um, a lot of DJ type stuff. I mean, the lead singer was, had the turntables and whatnot. Uh, it was, it was definitely very slipknot esque. Um, but I, I thought a little thicker and chunkier, you know, it's almost kind of like, um, um, a less refined Slipknot, if you will. Um, it's not the closest picture, but you can get the yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can kind of tell what sort of is kind of weirdly going on there. But yeah, they were. Uh, but it was they were definitely one of the ones that everyone was kind of like, dude, swollen teeth, swollen teeth, swollen teeth, swollen teeth. You know, like you, as you were walking around the venue, you could definitely hear people saying like, oh man, we got to make sure we catch that. We got to make sure we catch that. And so, uh, so that I made sure I did, and uh, and it w- it was really good. I got I got the like the last three songs three or four songs, but it was, uh, it was definitely fucking way heavy, way crazy. Um, I definitely want to see them live. Cause I, I, they played, um, they played the rave bar. So there was the rave bar, the rave stage. I think that was it. It's like the rave bar, which is the small one, the rave stage, which was kind of like your medium size one. And then the Eagles ballroom was the right. big, the big ballroom. Um, it was a lot of walking. <laughs> it was so much walking. Nice. I, I can I can't remember the last time I walked around a conv- uh, around a concert that much. Like it was just crazy. But it was. Let me tell you, man. This uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest was amazing. It okay. was an absolutely amazing show. Um, it was it was pretty well run. Um, it was pretty well run. It was. Uh, I, I think at most they were running behind maybe twenty minutes. Um, uh, I know, um, like Warbringer set got cut a little bit, which is always a bummer for me. Cause I fucking love that band. Um, but I got to see a lot of cool, cool new stuff that I wasn't expecting. Squid hammer was really great. Uh, misfire was good. Toxic ruin. Um, you know, there's, uh, uh, there was, there was just a lot of really great smaller bands that I was just, that was my big thing like i've seen goat whore before a million times i've seen right. you know a lot of these bands and i got to see them here too which was cool but like my big thing was i really want to see some of these bands i did miss a band that i really wanted to see um they were called putrid pile okay uh it's apparently a one-man death metal band and i was really bummed that i missed them um i unfortunately put the wrong i set the wrong alarm uh on my phone <laughs> for it so i accidentally had it had it as am instead of pm so i ended up missing it which, which was a bummer um but i mean war like i said warbringer was awesome uh imperium uh, imperial triumphant was really good violence was crushing my yeah. god i love that band i mean when it comes to thrash metal that is that's always going to be my jam uh that's why i always love like that's why i love doing the the, the new pod kind of thing because uh i always love seeing when you have like uh, like kind of like a new metalish kind of band and then they'll throw in those thrash elements right it's like when i when i when i hear that to me it's it's almost like uh there's your uh, putrid pile yeah. you know uh, alarm going off <laughs> yeah yeah seriously uh but like but that that's always like my thing is like it, it's almost like a warm fucking shower to me a hot shower is like when you just hear something like that where you just get that thrash metal thrown in there yeah somebody everybody keeps instagramming me i don't know what the hell is happening right now um anyway so uh that's why that's why my alarms keep going off um for the headliners and everything let me tell you the biohazard reunion. Yeah, I wanted to hear the biohazard because Dude. obviously they're they're one of the papas of all of this of Dude. all this genre. Dude, 
Okay, like, you know, between the two of us, I mean, we have seen probably many thousands of shows. Oh, yeah. And, ten, and thousands of bands. And I have, you know, my top, like, five shows ever. You know, one was, like, you know, Prince at the Palladium. I saw, when I saw Down on Down 3, their first show in L.A. Like, you know, there's there's a bunch of shows that are really up there. This one is definitely officially up there. Um, it, I felt like I was 16 again. I felt like I was 16 in Jersey, taking the train to New York, and man, everybody looked great. Um, everybody, um, everybody just looked awesome. Bobby still spins around like when he's playing guitar, and I'm yeah. just like, how does he do that? I don't understand it. But it was, I mean, they played every every song you know, you know, uh, Five Blocks to the Subway and, and Shades of Grey, and I yeah. mean. You know, punishment. I mean, like, and seriously, like, I was even, I was even texting with Billy after the show, and I was like, dude, when he comes in with that opening scream from Shades of Grey, like, I fucking lose my mind, dude. It's the, mo- <laughs> it was so fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, like COC was great. Napalm Death was awesome. Uh, uh, before Jer- we dive off of Biohazard, oh, man, I just want, I just want to say, like, I mean, Biohazard was one of those bands. Growing up, I loved Biohazard, and it was one that I would show people that got were getting into corn and Deftones, and it was just a little too heavy for them. Right, I, I would be like this. I, I never understood, like maybe why they weren't bigger, you know, because they they had all the elements there. But I think it was just because they were so aggressive and so heavy that yeah. maybe a lot of the new metal people at the time that were getting into corn and, and like I said, Limp Bizkit and things like that, they're a little bit more poppy and and maybe not as as dirty. Uh, uh, they, you know, they didn't get into them. Well, which is ironic also, because when you really think about it, you know, new metal was always considered rap metal yeah. and, you know, <laughs> it doesn't band- get much more rap metal than biohazard. Right. And, and also like kind of what bands were really doing that, you know, rage against the machine was, was one of them, you yeah. know, but then, you know, when the judgment night soundtrack came out, you know, that's what really blew open that whole thing. And then it was biohazard and onyx, oh, you know, and they- <laughs> I still listen to that, that version of slam all the yeah. time. I, I'm not to not not to throw this out there, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. I'm in that video for the oh nice for that slam one. That was my first time stage diving, and uh, the uh, the 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 security guard. I was super super nervous. I didn't want to do it. I was all scared, and he literally and I, I probably weighed fucking eighty pounds soaking wet back then too. <laughs> um, and he like literally took me yeah and he went, up you go, and I was like what? And then next thing I know, I was like off the stage and i was like that was the greatest thing in the world and so i was just constantly diving off the stage that night uh so, and so have you found yourself in the video or like are you are you any I'm of in it for a split second yeah i'm in it for a split second um but uh but yeah but it was um, but i am i am in a phil donahue episode st- oh, st- nice. <laughs> <laughs> if you look it up it's for mosh pit injuries when marilyn manson was on the show so oh, nice uh yeah yeah, I know, right? Fucking that was it was funny though, because Manson was like, anybody next person who comes up here and stage dives, she's either gonna get beaten or raped. And I was like, All right, I think I'm okay now. I think I'm yeah, I'm, I'm stop now. <laughs> when that's the threat. Um, but yeah, no, the biohazard thing, I mean, everybody was so hyped for it. Every yeah. I mean, and not only that, it was like other bands that were there for the show were all there watching it. Like everybody was excited about this. And and that was that feeling it was 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 palpable it was it was in the air you could taste the excitement you could taste the anticipation you could taste almost the anxiety you could you could feel it you know it was like it was electric in the air and having them be the final band you know when all the other stages were done and everything just meant that everyone had to be there but it was just so it was so good it was i mean it was just nostalgia punching you in the face so yeah. they did they did what you want them to do like when the headliner is on that's the only band playing yeah yeah okay. yeah when they yeah exactly so it's kind of like all the yeah the, all the rest of the stages basically closed and then the headliner was was the one that was on but man they just like and it's funny too because it's like you know when it comes to buying shirts and whatnot you know i mean between the two of us also i'm sure we have hundreds of shirts <laughs> mm-hmm. you know but then when you go to a show and you're just like i have to get that shirt you know? Well, that was the thing too. Like they they had merch upon merch upon merch. Like every video I saw, some of the stuff I think you sent me. Like every it, it looked like there was just a a merch area that was was madness. Yeah, well, they, because it was sponsored also by indie merch. Yeah. Uh, so they were selling a lot of their stuff, and then you know you had Nuclear Blast was there, and you had uh, um, um, uh, Jamie Jasta had his own mm-hmm. kind of uh, merch that was there as well. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. 
That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's my wife posting stuff about our cat. That's the worst part about it. Like, <laughs> notifications. Anyway, um, it, it was, uh, so he had his own merch kind of line over there too. And all of his shirts were $25. And I was oh, like, wow. but it was all Jasta mashup shirts. So yeah. there was one where it's uh, the demanufacturer uh, from Fear Factory, the 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 barcode spy, you know, rib cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then it's got a it's got like a skeleton of Jamie Jasta with the with the bandana like right in the front, and on the <laughs> front on the back it says something like, um, uh, like there was no love for me. It, it's got a Fear Factory lyric on the back, oh, but nice. it's still kind of like a hate breed Fear Factory hybrid shirt. It's really okay. cool. And then he had like a fucking <laughs> corpse grinder from. Kind of yeah. a cool shirt that just said respect the neck. Yeah. Uh and then uh I have I bought the Kirk Winstein one that said uh Beard of Doom, but nice. it kind of looked like it kind of looks like the Jesus from uh the, the first down cover. You know, but I was just like fuck man, like I really didn't want to buy shirts, but I was like when I saw these shirts, I was like, I got it, and especially a biohazard one. Cause it even, it says like, when you, when you're in Milwaukee, you best watch your back. You know, and I was <laughs> like, you know what? I'm like, I, you got me sold. I was like, I'll take one medium. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, but it was, uh, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you the other highlight, um, was, uh, just to move on to the next day. Okay. Was, um, I mean, fear factory was awesome. I I've seen them with the new singer and he, he's really, he nails it, man. You know, and it, it's not like, you know, somebody was like, Oh, Bert, who I'm like, no, it's not that at all. Uh, it is it, it. When you look at him from far away, he kind of looks like a younger version of Bert. Like his hair kind of comes down, right. so kind of, kind of flipping it back. And it, he, he's got like a lot of similar mannerisms to Bert, but it's, uh, but this guy's, his vocals are really, really good. He's, he's really on point. He's got a strong set of pipes and that's exactly what you need for singing with fear factory. Um, so that was definitely really cool. Um, who else played? Uh, terror was awesome. Cause like terror, like following the biohazard thing, when you saw terror, you're just like, Oh, like, it's just like this hardcore wonderfulness everywhere. You know, um, swollen teeth was dope. Uh, who else did I see that day? Um, Fro uh, jungle rot was amazing. They were really, they were fucking on fire. Uh, immolation was really good. Blood incantation was really good. I mean, there was just, it was a lot of death metal and whatnot, but I mean, but it was just everybody was there just kind of just it, it, it there was something about it where i don't know if it was because it's the first time that they're doing metal fest in 20 years right but it was almost like everybody had something to prove in a really weird way um everybody had like it was almost like everybody it, it was almost like everybody was playing like almost like they were fighting for their right to be there you know okay. um and I thought that everybody was really, they were pulling out their A game. Like this wasn't just another show. This wasn't them playing. Oh, this is our, okay, cool. All right, load in. We're playing Indianapolis again. You know, like it was not that. <laughs> it was something, there was something else in the air that just brought this 180% performances from everybody. And it was just, uh, and, and you know, it's easy to be jaded when you go to a lot of shows the way that we do. And when I go to a show like this where I'm just like, I fucking can't wait to go to another show. <laughs> like, you know, like right. when you really see it and everything, it's, it's real. There was something about it, dude. Obituary was incredible. Like fucking, that band is just, uh, you know, everybody was there for that yeah. shadows fall. Okay. Go ahead, man. Like I've always liked shadows fall. Uh, I always love the dudes, everybody in the band. I love those guys to death. They're always super sweethearts and just great dudes. I got to work with them when I was at century media and just a fantastic bunch of dudes. Um, holy shit, dude. They, they were, they, they were one of those bands that was playing so hard and they like Brian's vocals were so on point every, I mean, God, when they play, when they, if they go out on tour again, which I really hope they do, people have got to go and see them. Cause they, whatever you remember about shadows fall, they've amped it up. They've amped it up. They've somehow cranked it you know i mean god i used to see them 20 years ago kill switch and unearth and all that and these tiny clubs in new jersey and whatnot and it's like okay so now we're talking 20 years later 20 plus years later and they're more ferocious like right. they're more i don't know if it's if it's experience if it's age or what but like usually you would think with age you get slower or you start to slow down no <laughs> not at all <laughs> not at all with these guys. They are fucking so on top of their shit. It's not even fucking funny. Um, I think yeah. it's one of those things with them. I think with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, 
uh, John Denae or whatever being an anthrax mm-hmm. and the you know drummer obviously being an overkill and flotsam and jetsam and everything. like all these great bands over the years. I mean, they've been out there like busting their ass with getting their chops up and stuff. And so when they yeah. go back to Shadows Fall, I think they probably, you know, try to do it like 10 times more. Right. You know. And uh, and John had double duty that day because yeah. he had that <laughs> night too. And uh, I I can't imagine how long he must have had to soak his hands in ice afterwards. <laughs> yeah, a lot a lot of a lot of weedly wheeze on that one for him. <sighs> Fucking hey man, suicidal was great. I mean, Mike Muir is always just he's just entertaining to watch. Yes, <laughs> still got just, that. Like you just yeah, <laughs> like the whole time, man. <laughs> the whole time, dude. He's still going, man. Really great stuff. I unfortunately missed the Black Dahlia murder. Um, stupidly, I missed them, and I, I will have to admit that. Um, I was waiting in line to get food, and uh, <laughs> when I write, I was two people from getting my food, and they were like, "Sorry, we ran out of food." And so I had to go to a different food oh. truck and wait in line again uh, just to get food. And then I figured out an easier way to do it because they allowed in and outs, ins and outs until 6 p.m. Okay. So what I could have and then they just have like a regular gate, like uh, kind of surrounding the venue. And so what you can kind of do is just go get like Taco Bell or McDonald's or whatever that's nearby and then just bring it to the gate. And then just slide it through the bars and like kind of put it like behind nice. the food truck and then just go in and then go and get your food. And I was like, fuck, I realized that on Sunday. So that's kind of what, how I ended up doing that. Um, Anthrax was great. Uh, Rob Flynn came up and did I Am The Law with them. Right, right. Yeah. I, saw, I saw a video of that. Yep, which was really, really cool. Um, and uh, it was, yeah, it was just a real... It, that, that that night was really great and you know anthrax slayed and just everybody was was really into it and then uh on sunday let's see who played on sunday um sunday i got there a little late because i was really tired <laughs> uh, <laughs> a bit but, much but i did get to see my boys and in thrown into exile uh nice. they, they always bring it uh i did see unearth which was crazy i don't know why what they're doing right now but i i know they're on a new label Okay. Um, uh, I think who are they on? Uh, are they on the Orchard? Are they on? Uh, I can't remember where they where who what what label they're on right now. I think it's the the Orchard. Um, but uh, but they're like playing really really tiny venues, yeah. right? Now. And I was told that they're like, oh yeah, we want to kind of rebuild our our thing and everything like that. And I'm like, you guys have been around for over 20 years. You don't have to rebuild <laughs> anything. But it's not time to start over just yet. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So they were playing like on this last tour. They played like 300 capacity clubs. Yeah. You know, so like these really. T- so they played the rave bar, which only held like fucking 150, 200 people. You know, um, and so the place was fucking going berserk. You know, because it was just them. Like, I mean, I, I honestly, I think my living room was bigger than that fucking bar area. You know, so it's like the idea of playing like, you know, unearth playing my living room kind of thing was really I was like, holy shit, dude. It was really- you keep bringing up the bar area when Primer played the 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 rave the first time mm-hmm. we played the big room with dope and skin lab and everybody right. right and so i was like we get back to playing the rave in like 2008 when you know the kind of a lull of the band and i was like like man this could be awesome i love this venue and like oh yeah you're playing this little bar room i'm like oh yeah oh okay i guess i don't i guess we're not as cool as i thought we were <laughs> <laughs> well you know what i mean all things considered the way things are going i'm sure you guys will definitely if you guys if you guys did a uh, a little headlining reunion run i think you guys would play that bigger room for sure yeah. you know um but yeah there was uh there was a lot i missed i missed a bunch of those bands though but i did catch gate creeper um nice. those guys i think the first time i saw them was at uh the uh, not fest iowa was the first yeah. time i got to see them and they are just they're they're crushing and it's so funny because they it's singer i don't know his name or anything but like he just kind of walks around in like a ratty t-shirt like <laughs> and, but he's but like they still come out and just they're so crushing um they were they were amazing uh, i forgot to mention somebody from the first day uh crowbar played their whole first record and nice. that was just oh it was sludgy wonderfulness um Cephalic Carnage was awesome. Broken Hope was uh, Broken Hope was good, but I've never been a Broken Hope fan. But you know, I like if there's a band that I don't really care for, but I can see everybody going nuts for. I I really I kind of more pay attention to the crowd and kind of really get into like what the crowd's doing. Yeah. Um, and then Vended played. 
um, which was cool. You know, uh, that was another kind of, if you will, new metal-y kind of thing. Yeah, um, I was going to, I mean, I don't know if you felt the same way, but when I saw him at Knotfest Iowa, I thought it was cool. And then I saw him again a year or so later at Louder Than Life, and you can tell that they've been seasoned by the road. So I don't totally. know, have you got that vibe from them at, at Milwaukee Metal Fest? Uh, yeah, and I also had just seen them about two weeks earlier out here. Oh, that's right, with, uh, uh, with, Bloodywood. That with Bloodywood, yeah. Yeah, with Bloodywood. And it's like, you could definitely tell that there's there's it's not a road weariness to them it's a road experience yeah. that they definitely have now and uh and, and i think griffin is really good he's he's great with the crowd he's great after the show talking to people you know it's like um it, it, yeah you can tell that they definitely have it down they're definitely they sound tighter you know mm-hmm. and uh and it, it just they were really good and the, and the crowd was all about it and i think that's kind of the cool thing too is that when you look at a lot of these bands, whether it's your your undeaths or your 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 immolations and all that, you know, it's easy for a lot of those bands to be like death to false metal and fuck new metal and blah yeah. blah blah blah, you know. But at a show like this, it's almost like being like on seventy thousand tons of metal, the cruise and all that. It's like everybody's there for the same reason. Yeah. So you know, you could be wearing a you know a corn shirt, or you could be wearing a deicide shirt, and it doesn't matter. Everybody's there for the same fucking reason. And what's and- funny about a corn shirt or a deicide shirt? That would have been my high school experience because I listened to both deicide and corn right. in high school. You know what I'm saying? Right, like- exactly. It's same here, and it, that's that's kind of the thing. It's like, but I, I felt like in the in the you know, 2000 aughts and, and everything yeah. like that. It's like, you know, it became this very divided thing. Like, well, we're not going to be part of this backwards red ball cap Fred Durst kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I don't, I refuse to do that. You know, it, it, you know, there was that line sort of drawn in the sand at that time. And I feel like now everybody is kind of in this, I don't know. We're, we're, we're all kind of, I don't know, not to, for, for lack of a better term, it's like, we're all kind of friends again, you know, yeah, like we can be friendly they, again. Yes. Right. You know, you can have vended open up for lamb of God, you know, or something like that. And it's, it's not considered this like, Oh, it's this, you know, yo, 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 MTV reps, you know, blah, blah, blah. Kind of, <laughs> kind of stereotype that it had at one point, you know? Um, so like that was, that was definitely the cool part about it. Um, uh, pissing razors was fucking great also i haven't seen them in years and years um i missed the halo effect unfortunately uh after the burial was amazing i mean i love seeing that band because uh they're just their sound is so thick it's so thick like it's like it almost like when you hear it it's kind of like sh- rattles your rib cage you know yeah um, how was how was Machine Head, man? That's that's the one band on the bill that they, you know they they've stopped playing festivals. They stopped really touring with other bands a long time ago. I know they've been doing it now, like recently, but right. for a long time, is if you wanted to see Machine Head, you were going to go see Machine Head for three hours. They were the only band, and you were gonna yep. you were gonna leave yeah, happy. Was, yep, so. it was an evening with Machine Head. Usually, you yeah. know, um, last actually they were the last show I saw before uh, everything closed down for the pandemic, uh, yeah. and they did all of uh, Burn My Eyes. Uh, they did two sets. One was all of Burn My Eyes, and the other the other set was everything else. Wow. And it was like one of the best shows fucking ever. Um, and so, and then uh, unfortunately, you know, they 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 had to cancel this entire tour that they had, like cancel, cancel, yeah. like, not even postpone, just fucking straight up cancel. And I, I'm sure that you know weighed pre- pretty heavily on those guys, especially Rob, uh, Rob Flynn. You know, I'm sure it was it was pretty devastating to, you know try and have everything set up and get it all moving and production and lights and merch and every, and then to be like, Nope, sorry. Can't happen. <laughs> Actually. No. Uh, did they, did they bust out much of the burn my eyes era material in this one? Uh, the burning not, red. I mean, uh, no, no, nothing, nothing in particular, uh, nothing that really stands out. I mean, they did play a bunch of songs off of burn my eyes. Um, you know, they played take my scars. They played, they played a lot of that, you know, a lot of the stuff that you normally would hear on at a machine head show. Um, uh, so that was definitely, it was definitely good. Um, and same thing. It's just a, you know, everyone's there to see this. And then of course, um, you know, Lamb of God, uh, now Lamb of God, I love this band a lot. Yes. <laughs> seen them a million times. I, I, you know, the first time I saw them was at CBGB's ironically enough. Wow. Um, and, uh, it was really funny cause they were playing like a metal blade Christmas party or something like that. And I remember, 
I, I walked in and they were like, oh yeah, we're Lamb of God. And I was like, oh man, is this like Christian metal? Is that what I'm for? <laughs> and he's like, and I remember, he, and, you know, it's like the tiniest stage ever at, at oh. CB's. And uh, he's like, and Randy's pacing around the stage and he's like, I'd just like to thank God. And I was like, great. He's like, for giving me the power to crush your skulls. The song was called Black Label. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? And all of a sudden they kicked into Black Label and I was like, my whole head exploded. Um this show was supposed to be the 20th anniversary of As the Palace is Burn, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite Lamb of God record. What was a bummer was that they only played like the first four songs and that was it. And I really wanted to hear Blood Junkie. I really wanted to hear Boot, uh, Boot Scraper. I really wanted to hear some of those kind of like deeper tracks. And, and yeah. that was the only thing that bummed me out. That was the only, I was like, Fuck, I really was hoping. Cause like even, even their merch was just like a picture of Palace is Burn and then like the, song titles on the back it was that was that was a little that was one of the things that i was a little bummed out about both with machine head uh machine head anthrax and lamb of god um uh that they didn't do like a a milwaukee metal fest shirt right you know i was uh, i was kind of looking forward to that i think the only band that really did it was biohazard yeah you know um but it was i'll tell you something they they were talking about me i mean if they do this as a yearly thing um a that would be phenomenal because the show was really something else i mean it jamie jasta has a lot to be fucking proud of for putting on a show like this he really he coordinated it and pulled it all together and got all the right people and 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 it worked out really well i mean there, I'm, I'm sure there was a couple of hiccups here and there yeah but i mean on the whole i think everybody left that show like like that was fucking amazing you know um but uh, but if they do it every year on Memorial Day or Memorial Day weekend, rather, I should say, yeah. uh, I will be there every fucking year, every year. Me and my wife were actually talking. She was like, well, I'm off that time. So why don't we just go and do it? And I was yeah. like, you're down. I'm more than down. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? Can we say ironically that this is the first episode that your wife was, uh, you know, in the other room to <laughs> to not disrupt the show yes she still somehow managed to figure out a way to disrupt the show which she's, she's did like that. She's very reliable <laughs> in that regard unfortunately um yeah, just as, no. we, as we wrap up man um did you see any any new metal like shirts anybody wearing lincoln park corn system of down ironically um, unironically anything like that? uh i mean uh there was a bunch of people wearing deftone shirts i saw corn shirts um i mean duh, like you know the vendors that were there had patches for i mean I would have to say literally the amount of patches that I was going through probably went into the tens of thousands of wow. patches that were there yeah. considering because they had um on the bottom level, uh, they had like a little metal flea market. Yeah. And so uh, there was, you know, people selling vinyl records. I bought my fair share of fucking vinyl. Um, actually, I bought, actually, hold on. Is it here? Let me see if it's here somewhere. Uh, I bought um, uh, the first two Pantera records nice. on vinyl. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, um, Oh, why can't I, the, the Metal Magic and... Um, oh, you got those, wow. Yeah, I got the Glam Records. The uh, project, I, projects in the Jungle, or... That's the one, Projects yeah. in the Jungle, that was the other one. Uh, and I got a, an Iron Maiden picture disc, because uh, I'm a fucking sucker for picture discs, I love them. Um, but um, but yeah, but I mean, there was like, there was tons of vinyl, tons of shirts, uh, tons of patches, tons of pins. So, you know, every and that was the thing, everybody was, was, uh, was represented, I felt. You know, I mean... Hey, maybe I didn't see a spine shank pin or a shirt, but you know, you could <laughs> right. tell that there was definitely, you know, it, it, everybody was there. You know, it's like you, you, uh, you know, you could go through all the shirts, and it's like, all right, you got obituary, children of Bodom, corn, Deftones, Rob Zombie, da 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 da. You know, like so, it was, you know, all of that stuff was there. Plenty of people wearing corn and Deftone shirts. Um, fuck, I was wearing a shirt that had Betty White on it, so you know, whatever. You know, it's like. <laughs> You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it, it, again, like I was saying before, it, I, I don't feel like there's an anybody's wearing corn stuff, ironically, you know, like as, as a, you know, make fun of them or, yeah. you know, kind of doing it in a, in a silly kind of way kind of thing. There wasn't anybody who was like, oh, look, that's like a Fred Durst lookalike. He's got baggy, ba you know, tan pants and a backwards <laughs> red hat yeah. and a life beater on, you know, like it was nothing like like that. It was just, you know, everyone was there for, you know, it's almost like everyone was there for the right reasons. And, and that's if anything, you know, beyond the bands just the the vibe and being in the culture it was so like 
it, it just felt good. It felt in a weird way. It felt like a church. Nice. That's probably the ironic part. <laughs> That's probably the most ironic part. It, it just it felt like a church where everybody was there for the same exact reason, you know, and nobody was going to be, you know, whether you're a big tough guy or a little fucking emo kid, like it, it didn't matter. Everyone yeah. was just there. You know, if you're an emo kid with your fucking hair like this and, you know, you have a <laughs> fucking Suicide Silence shirt on, it's like, OK, cool. You're still sitting at the table with the dude with the, you know, Cradle of Filth shirt on. Nice. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter, you know, and uh, at a show like that, it doesn't matter, you know, so it was but it really was something else. I highly rec if if people can go next year, please go. It is definitely one of the shows that's worth supporting. That's worth making into a big deal. You know, um, is it going to be a welcome to Rockville? Is it going to be a uh, incarceration type of show? Maybe not. Right. But you know what? The vibe and everybody that's there and everyone was just nice. Everyone was polite. Even the drunk people. Like I didn't see anybody <laughs> getting belligerent. I didn't see yeah. anybody talking shit. I didn't see any like everybody was just there, you know, like everyone was there for that reason. So it was really incredible. And I highly recommend it for anybody, even if the bands that are on it, like you might not know, that's even more reason to go. Right. Because it's where you will discover new bands that you've never heard of, but you will also discover bands that probably have been around for 20, 30 years that you just never even thought about. And then, boom, suddenly you become a new fan. And uh, that, that to me is what made it really, really worthwhile. Well, man, let's dive into our interview with uh, Jeremiah Mayhem of Concrete Dream. Uh, you know, one thing we want to do on this podcast is not only bring you the the old school with like Mike from Spineshank or Robert Vera from Nonpoint, but bring you some new guys like Adam from Dropout Kings or like Jeremiah from uh, Concrete Dream. So, uh, you know, so we will dive into that interview and then uh, I guess Ro and I will talk to you guys next week. So, uh, yeah. So for the new pod, I'm Joshua Toomey. That's Ro Coley. This is our interview with Jeremiah Mayhem, and we will talk to you guys next week. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Stay metal. All right, that'll, that'll do there. Yeah. Welcome, Jeremiah Mayhem of Concrete Dream to the new pod here, NotFest.com. Jeremiah, how you doing, man? Good. Feeling great. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, new album. Uh, it was all a dream. Fucking, it'll be out now once this interview is out, man. I've been listening to it all day, and uh, I gotta say, man, what a killer album! Thank you, man. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, you know, it's, it's funny about this album. Like, you know, I gotta, I gotta keep it real. You know, I'm, I'm all about keeping it real. Right. So, um, you know, this album's a little bit of the new concrete dream, a little bit of the old, but it's also the last of the old because we had a big um, regime change after the tour. We would line up and stuff like that. Y'all know how it goes, you know. <laughs> right. Um, I'm not even gonna get into everything, but you know, shit, shit happens, but we keep it moving, you know? And so the band, but it's moving in a different direction. So basically now we, we got a new bass player that's gonna be doing the vocals like my old bass player did. And we have a second guitar player still that came in. Um, Craig, big shout outs to Craig and Josh, the two new members. Um, Juan and JFK are still in the band, of course, the original members. And now we're just, you know, reformatting. We're actually going in the studio to do some new, new stuff, um, with the drummer from Fire from the Gods, Rich. Big ups to Rich, big ups to Fire from the Gods. Um, he's gonna track us. We're going out to Houston at the end of August to track, um, two singles with him. So look out for that, too. That's gonna be a part of the news. So this album was like five old songs, if you guys noticed, and, um, you know, three about three new ones. So it was like, you know, the, the last phase of like the old lineup. Right. And then, you know, Zinger, big ups to Kevin Zinger, big ups to Sub Noise for believing in us. And, you know, he he's trying to do like this really cool thing where it's like, you know, right before Concrete dropped the original album back in 2018, um, our the P, we had a PR change. It was a big PR thing. And um, then we really didn't get that big push on that album that we were supposed to. Like we did this big video. We had Hyro the Hero with us. We mm -hmm. did this giant video with Rage, big ups to Rage, big ups to Hyro. Um, you know, big ups to E Train Records that that put a, put out that video and put out our first album. But you know, it, sometimes you know the PR could just it could be a swing or a miss. You know what I mean? So we kind of we we kind of didn't get it didn't get a good push for the world and masses to hear it. And then when it started, kind of, then the pandemic came. Right. 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 When we started kind of getting a buzz, like oh, it started to kind of you know because we did we did um I think we almost broke a million streams on Buckout Road. So oh, wow. we we were getting traction. And, you know, the pandemic came and then we reformatted, then we dropped Contagion. And then 
Facebook because we dropped Contagion. Facebook kicked us off of Facebook. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so like I was like, and we were, and the song was doing great, and the video is awesome. You know what I mean? Like it's like it, it's it's just so funny. So it was like we never really we just kept on getting like a little bit ahead yeah. and then wind out of our sales. A little bit ahead, wind out of our sales. So you know it, it's been a, it's been a roller coaster. But now like after the tour, we toured nationally. We did all pretty much every state besides Puerto Rico and Alaska. Um, and Hawaii, you know, we, we learned a lot. We grew a lot. I grew a lot. And, you know, we got the backing from sub noise now. And I still got Danny Diablo in my corner managing me being my, you know, he's like my big bro. He's always there for me, whatever I need. And we had the support of the New York underground and New Jersey underground. And we've been still grinding, building, building this name because people believe in us. So it's like, we, you know, that's the whole point of concrete dream, never stopping, believing in your dream. Like that's, that's, that's literally the point of it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's never too late to really do this shit. So th this album is just that it was all a dream. Like, you know, it was just, it was all a dream. Like literally we went, <laughs> Shifty put us on a show with him and Whiskey Go-Go um, in December, 2021. We played Whiskey Go-Go with Crazy Town, sold out, madness. That day we went and met Kevin Zinger. He gave us the deal. We went, played that show. I recorded our single Amnesia with Billy Bile. Big up to Billy from Biohazard. Yep. And also big up to Ricky Armelino. <laughs> yeah, you already know. Big up to You have no idea, man. Working with him is amazing. I, we can talk about that all day. Billy, yep, Billy, no, Billy trust me. And I'm so happy that they're back together. And I, I, I just can't tell you. Because when we were in the studio, we talked about it. Like, I was like, well, it could happen. He's like, you never know what could happen, kid. You know what I mean? Like, right. he's, he's a big dreamer, Billy. And that's why I love him. And yeah. he believes in me. That's why he... He gave me the time of day, brought me to his studio. We worked on this song. It was co-produced by um, him and Ricky Armelino from My Sign Kills, who was our original producer. And we made a monster single. We got Danny Diablo on that one. That's the one we shot the video for. We about to drop that in two weeks. Nice. So look out for that. Amnesia is like the first big single off it. Um, you know, that's the one I'm the most proud of. I'm proud of everything, obviously, but that just gives you a taste of, you know, the new. You know what I mean? Where we're going and what, what, what I really want to do. And then also Kill the Lights um, is also a big one on there of where we're also headed to. And big ups to um, Stay Metal Ray and Alejandro Mena, the old old members that were on it. They also were a big part of that record. And um, Ricky Armelino took it and kind of rewrote everything and changed it as a producer. You know what producers do. So that's another big record on this that's new on the right. album that I want people to look towards. But we're kind of leaving that too. Cause it's like, we don't have those members in the band and we're working with different producers now and I'm growing, everybody's growing. The sound is changing. So we're going to have essence of that, but we have a completely new vocalist in the band. You know what I'm saying? And not only have I gotten better at singing and screaming and rapping, but you know, rapping is more my thing always has been more my thing. The singer that I have in the band now is insane. Um, big ups to Josh. He has an awesome voice. It's, you know, it, it's loud. It's proud. It, it, it's um falsetto. He can hit like these Johnny Craig harmonies and those Anthony Green harmonies and that Seo Sin. Like he has like a different vibe and he has a real R and B flavor to him. And he's very New York. He's also Puerto Rican. He's half Puerto Rican like me. And he, you know, we, we get along in so many different ways. You know what I'm saying? Like he has a lot of that flavor. He's also a popping DJ. So he has a lot of a different attack of the vocals than Mena did, you know, which, which all respects to Alejandro Mena. I got nothing but love for him, man. I, nothing bad to say about any member it we've all been a part of the journey wouldn't be here if it wasn't for any old member right. and new but now we're about to go somewhere new and I'm, I'm so excited to show you guys the new new stuff <laughs> so this is just a taste just a taste so it was only a dream i mean does that does that basically reference kind of the pandemic essentially like like what the it fuck references the whole the, the whole like just literally it was one phone call with shifty from crazy town big ups to shifty love you brother um, one phone call from Crazy Town, one phone call from um, Kevin Zinger. We're in L.A. the week before Christmas, okay? All of us were sick. We played the show. We got a deal, right? And this is all, like, happening, like, right after a pandemic. Like, this is, like, you know, like, we, we just got out of this huge rut. Now, right. like, we're out in L.A. We're doing this thing. It was unreal to me. And then a couple of months later... We're doing a national tour in my Acura, five guys in a four-door Acura, <laughs> traveling the country, ha opening up for Scarhead. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a dream. You know what I mean? And, right. and it was, there was parts of, the, the, you know, not all dreams are good. There was part, there's bad dreams, there's good dreams, there's nightmares. You know, before the tour, 
Um, my grandmother had passed away, who's like a big matriarch of my life, you know, you know, it was a big influence to me and showed me rock and roll, showed me so many things. So I went on tour with a bad um, state of mind and a bad frame. Um, so I was very, you know, elusive and I was sick. I was on a lot of pain medicine and a lot of cold medicine. I didn't have COVID. I took a million COVID tests. I was just sick. So the first two weeks was just like, my grandma just died the week before. I'm on tour. We're in my car. We're just crammed up. We're not making no money. We're just grinding, pushing this shit, right. driving out west. I never did that. You know, I never left Jersey like that. You know what I mean? Like Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Boston. That's, you know, right. D.C. That's like my little realm. <laughs> We never really left. We never really went out west, and, and we we were doing it. We did it hard, every show, back to back. It was bow, 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 bow. It was like a dream, bro. It was like a dream, like seriously. And then we went back to LA, had another meeting with Zinger, saw him, and he's like, "You guys are doing this in your Acura? This shit is crazy. <laughs> what the fuck is it crazy?" And I was like, "We believe in this, bro. This is this is you know everybody thought we were crazy. I know we're crazy. You know, look, right. we lost two we lost two members of the band after the tour. You know what I mean, like." So it was like a lot, a lot went down, but we stayed together. We pushed through. We remained moving. We remained with our plays. We dropped a video right after the tour. We dropped Twitter figures. Twitter figures did great. Charted on Spotify, did its thing. Videos did its thing, you know. And uh, dropping now amongst all these people is so, the music is so oversaturated. You can only be happy for what, you know, you do. You know what I'm saying? All right. So but, like, I mean, that's it, why it was all a dream, you know. That, that that's like you know, to, in a nutshell, why like it's just been so a blur to me. You know what I mean? For sure. I mean, you can definitely see. I mean, the hustle is definitely there, and that's something that you know, a person like Kevin and 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 even and Billy and all that. Like, I think that's what they they respect more than anything else. You know, is is people who come in with that hustle. Like, you know, you pull up <laughs> five dudes in your Acura, and you're like, "This is how we tour." And you know, they're just like, "Fuck, all right, cool." Like, you know, obviously, you guys aren't prima donnas and shit. You know. No, we're not. We were we were all we, we did share. We couldn't sleep in the Acura because that's, you know, that's where we drew the line. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but we we did. Um, We had to get one hotel room a night. So, right. you know, you know how you know how that goes. That's a brutal cost. You know, we, we were really, really making money off the shows, but we were killing it on merch. Every show, country Jeep so merch. Big ups to everybody that supported us. And big ups to everybody that, you know, really like, um, rocked with us because we people were leaving us tips at the merch booth like you don't understand we were getting so much love it was crazy and that that showed us that we really believe in this that showed us that you know we really you know you know we we got to push this shit we got to keep going we got to keep going and you know listen did i crack at moments did certain people crack at moments yeah you guys know how tours are Mm -hmm. you you guys both been on tour you know how it is (laughs) you know what i'm saying imagine touring in a five-door acura you know what i'm saying like and gas prices are seven dollars a gallon, eight gallons a gallon. Yeah, you know, yeah. shit was shit was brutal, man. We were we were we were you know barely surviving, you know, but we were doing it. Wait, and, I was um, I was uh I was joking with my wife earlier today, and um uh you know when when Primer first when I first joined Primer, like every time I'd ever seen Primer fifty five live tour buses, tour buses, tour buses, nice buses, right? So I'm like, I and they're like, do you want to be in the band? I'm like, yes, I want to be in the band. And like, all right, sweet, we're going to go on tour, but we got to rent a van. I'm like, all right, well, fine, I'm I'm okay with vans. So we go to rent the van, and nobody has like good enough driving record, insurance, nothing matches up to where they can rent the proper van and trailer. Yep. So we ended up having to rent two Astro vans, one for the gear and one for the band. And it, so, so I basically did my first primer tour in an in a, like an Astro van across the across the country. I would have I would have <laughs> wished we had the two vans. Right. Right. That just sounds like you made that sound like an escalate. Like, oh my God. Right. And you know what's funny? Before right before the tour, um I had a Acura MDX, which was a lot bigger and more comfortable. But I had to get rid of it because you know times are rough right now and we really ain't yeah. doing it like that no more. So um I got I, I switched to the ILX. And that's why we took my car because my car was the most reliable. You know, I had the Acura roadside assistance, you know, 2018, right. low mileage, brand new tires. You know, it was like, you know, you got to be safe on the road. Like, that shit mm-hmm. was crazy. Like, when we were driving in, like, Death Valley, the home of the Undertaker and shit, like, fucking trucks coming <laughs> at us down the, you know, people are trying to get around you and shit, fucking coming. You know, that shit was crazy. Yeah. That shit, was, the tour was the most insane shit. That, that's why I can't wait to go right, like, we're about to drop this single. We, you know, we're going to do this album and then I'm going to go record a single, but I can't wait to write the new, new album because we have so many stories, man. I'm going to tell about and man. We, we about to do a thing where they about to just interview me for, about the whole tour. Cause we have some trauma stories. Man. That shit was crazy. <laughs> that shit was crazy. Right. 
America's crazy. That's all I got to say. America's yeah, absolutely. Insane. God bless America. Me, especially when you, when you, you know, you haven't really left Jersey and all that. I was the same way before I moved to LA. I, I think the furthest West I'd been was like, you know, fucking uh, 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 like Wisconsin or some shit like that, you know, with my folks. And, uh, but yeah, it's like once you once you when, once I drove cross country, I was like, yo, this is like especially driving through places like Texas where there's just literally nothing, you know, for <laughs> for my like, yeah, it's like to be like a bunch of dudes crammed in a car like that. I'm like, that's we were yeah. scared so much because you don't understand. We got Jersey plates. You guys yep. know the stigma about it. you know how many times I get pulled over, man, just because I got Jersey plates everywhere I drive. I'm not even joking. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then on top of that. We had fucking weed and mushrooms in the car. We were all right. fucked up. Like we couldn't get pulled over in Texas, man. We would have, we would have been fucked up with the fucking cops. <laughs> and we were driving during they called. They were like, "Yo, don't drive through the tweaker hours, which are like from ten to four. So right. The cops are pulling over everybody and shit. That shit was crazy, man. Like Texas, big ups to Texas. We actually got the most, some of the most love in Texas. Big ups to Corpus Christi. <clears throat> like literally, we had um actually day one concrete dream fans. Um, big ups to them. Ismael and his girl. Um, they, they actually, you know, day one, when they first got together before they had their kid, they loved concrete dream. They were like a part of that. Our first, oh, an alternative press did our first release. They go to metal Maria. She got us that, um, they, they were like part of that first wave of fans we got and they never were able to see us, never able to see us. And they could not believe our first tour. We landed Corpus Christi in their fucking hometown. Nice. So they came to see us. I'm at the merch table. I never received that love before. It was insane. And then how about this? They had broken up for for like two or three years. And this was their first date after the pandemic prior to them breaking up, you know, kind of trying to rekindle the flame was a concrete dream show, which was, lit, which was to me, which was awesome. So yeah, I, I blessed them. Magical. I blessed them with shirts and shit. And stick. I, was like, Yo, y'all. <laughs> I bought them drinks. I was like, you guys are going to make another baby tonight. You go home and make love to concrete dream. Yeah, so it was, <laughs> that was like what that was a cool thing. That was a cool point of the tour. You know what I'm saying? Like there were so many cool moments. Big ups to Sacramento. Big ups to the Boozers. Um, the um, the uh, Boozer MC. They they put us up in there. We played in their den, and all the Sacramento hardcore mo- uh, motherfuckers came out. Big ups to Dolores. I mean, we had so many like special shows. Like that show was insane. Big ups to Reno. The Reno hardcore scene for putting us out. That was a pop up show. Big nice. ups to fucking L.A., of course, East L.A., Count Tom putting us on, opening up for Count Tom and Racial Profile. That shit was lit. You know, the whole fucking East L.A. came out. That shit was crazy. Like, we have so many good times, man, on the road, man. It was, it was amazing, man, the shows. So I can't wait to go back out there. And we have some shit in the works. The label got some shit in the works for us. So I'm praying that we, you know, can get out there on a solid tour where I'm not driving and I can just work on me and be centered and, Right. Work on my, you know, my health, my endurance, and all of that, you know, because you know, it's a lot. It's a lot to do that. I was doing all that, being the front man, selling the merch, you know, kissing the babies, all that, whatever, <laughs> and driving. Right. You know, you know, you know. So right after I played, and because and two of the band members, the bass player and guitar player, were playing for Scarhead. So right after we played, they there was one act. Tony Slippers went on, and then they would have to go on for Scarhead, oh, and wow. then I would just be at the merch table selling merch as much as I could. Trying right. to get this money so we could eat, awesome. you know, and get the hotels and shit. Right. It was wild, man. And big ups to Prime Fifty Five and you know your work. I'm a big fan of you, Josh, man. Like you have no idea, Prime Fifty Five is one of my favorite bands, man. You, I can't Good. tell you how much Get Loose inspired me when I was a kid. Like, like seriously, that shit was you know that you shit know, was knocking in my head. It's funny you brought that up because of all people to, to turn me on to you guys back, you know, whenever I, uh, a few years ago was Bobby Burns, a primer and Bobby That's listens to like, he listens to like no it. new music. Like he, you know, we would be on tour and he would have like the Duran Duran greatest hits on and shit like that in the van. Like, like he, 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 he never, he never keeps up with like new bands and for him to be like, Hey, have you heard this band concrete dream? And I was like, no, I'll check them out. And I listened to you guys and I was like, this is, bizarre for him to come to me with a new right. band but yeah he was the one that turned me on to you guys that's amazing man that i can't tell you how much it makes me feel because you know you guys are such a big inspiration to me and um you know i was very fortunate i think the reason why concrete dreams you know really getting a new metal pure new metal sound is because my upbringing was you know i watched El Nino get their first deal i was in the studio watching that shit mm-hmm. i was at their first show on times square three dollar a three dollar bill you know with, with when everybody was in the, the singer from Biohazard was there, Ed Money from Town Concrete was there. This shit was a sold-out show. This shit was a phenomenon. They were from my hood. I got to watch that. 
Yep. You know, you have no idea how that inspires a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, I was also big inspired by Drag Pipe, and I shared a studio with Drag Pipe. And they got an even bigger deal at the time. They were signed to Interscope at the time. Yep. They got a bigger deal from El Nino. Big ups to Drag Pipe, big ups to Gino, J. Diablo, fucking Monty, fucking fucking Ever, Richie Garcia, Jano, all of them. <laughs> these, these, are, these are all my big bros. Like, real talk. Big ups to Laz, big ups to Dave, big ups to Chris. Big ups to El Rizzo. Big ups to Roger, the original yep. lineup. Oh, Everybody, Roger, I man. Fuck. I miss Roger. I don't give a fuck. You know, all these guys, you understand, I was 15, 16. They let me in the studio rock with my bands. They always showed me love. I got to meet Jamie Josta when I was fucking 18 years old in fucking 44th Street Studio when he came to record on One Nation Underground. You know what that did to me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that shit fucked my head up. Like, you know, like, I've been so fortunate to be around all this shit and then also be around a lot of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And, right. and, you know, be around the whole, you know, New York hip hop culture. So I've always been in the New York hardcore culture, the New York hip hop culture, the, you know, whether it's been Jersey, New York, but I'm from Jersey and I rep Jersey, you know, and I claim it hard. And I feel like I got to put it on my back because I owe it to everybody and inspire the next band that's going to come out of here and do it. And we have a lot of other bands. Big ups to Toy Machine, big ups to Red Star, my boy Damien, um, big ups to Jinx out of New York, like, Big ups to Dropout Kings, my brothers, my label brothers. Like, there's a lot of bands doing this movement that y'all started. You know, we're, we're trying to bring it back and we're trying to make it a household movement now. And it went from being like something corny to being nostalgic to being <laughs> right. a sick new world. Right. Yeah. You, know what I'm, yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Well, that was going to be my question too was like, you know, growing up with it, just like all three of us have, you know, during like the whatever it is, the 2010s, if you will. You know, when it was kind of like almost like a slur, it was almost like you said, it was like corny. You know, if you were like new metal, then, you know, you were in your backwards fucking Fred Durst hat and all these kinds of things, yeah. Yeah. you know, between between that time and now. I mean, you know, did you did you feel like, oh, man, like, I don't want to go in that direction? Or were you always just like, no, this is where this is my lane. This is where I'm staying. I've always. So before Concrete Dream, just I'm going to give you a little bit. I know we're running, out, we're running low on time. I'm sorry about that. Um, was, uh, before Concrete Dream, I was an artist called White Henny. Everybody in my hood called me White Henny. And um, I had a small deal, a distribution deal with Sony Orchard. I recorded my whole album in Quad Studios. And it was more like trap meets kid rock. It was still edgy new metal because I've always loved it. But I, it was more hip hop driven. And that really didn't work out due to a, mu a million things. And I knew in my heart that the rap metal and the trap metal and the new metal, and it was all coming back. I saw it. I saw this 10 years ago, and it's on record. You could go to the trap metal hashtag, scroll all the way down. Scroll, or I dare somebody to scroll all the way down. You're going to see me there. White, a picture of White Henny and a picture of Marilyn Manson and Gucci Man, <laughs> because that's where it was going, and it was coming back, because all these artists like Corey from Slipknot, Marilyn Manson, whether it be Little Wayne. I mean, so I, I can go on and on. All these guys were hanging out and chilling and trying to bring this shit back 10 years ago. And then that's when rappers and all these trap rappers started screaming on their records. And then we got some really cool artists like City Morgue and Horror 999. They're also from Jersey. Big ups to yep. Horror 999. I can't wait to meet them and vibe out with them. Big ups to Slay Squad too. Somebody else that's in this shit doing their thing. Um, you know, Oxymorons also. You know, is it's we carrying that shit you know what i'm saying and, and i feel like the more people that support each other and the more that we talk about the new metal because that's where it comes from and we show and now all these rap kids want to dress like it and then it's all coming back and it, that's where i knew i just knew it i just knew it i always knew it wasn't going to be corny again because right? it was never corny it was never corny it was just metalcore and emo kind of took over right people started wearing tight pants i saw it happen i right. watched it happen I watched it happen when El Nino, right after when Eno dropped One Nation Underground, which was 2010, which is funny. You said, you know, yeah. I saw it happen. Half of the pit was motherfucking new scenester kids with the, with the, with the, with the this okay. and the fucking tight pants. <laughs> well, God bless it. Listen, I, I'm not hating on it. And yeah. then half of it was motherfuckers like me still wearing baggy shit, Adidas, you know, dressing like dressing old school, you know, right. you know di different dress, you know, and I saw it. And I saw it happen and I knew what was going to come because, you know, the generation's always going to change. But now look what's happening. It's reverting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 10 years later. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just the time looping, man. And I, I think um, all this is happening at the right time. You guys doing this new metal podcast is amazing. 
t- yeah. interviewing everybody. I just watched the one you did with Dropout Kings, my brother Adam. Love you, brother. Um, <laughs> Eddie, what's up? Yeah. And um, you know, I feel like the more people that are behind it and support us, and if we can get a new family values tour going, and we can get corn and Limp Biscuit and the bigger guys to really see what all of us are doing. I know they're watching us. I know <laughs> they are watching us. You know what I'm saying? So we, we just need to get another one going and something bigger. We gotta get we gotta just bring it all back. I think Ozfest is coming back supposedly and you know, Pantera's back together, Biolab's back together, like right. everything's kind of doing a full circle right now. So it's like right. let's just support it and make it cool. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Let's make new metal cool again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> new, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Like, I mean that's, that's kind of it. I mean, I think as long as as long as people are taking all of those influences and really bringing it back, you know, kind of to where the roots are. I think that's what's going to really do it. I mean, you know, it just became so glutted after a little while that it just became like, you know, nobody even wanted to like look at it, touch it or whatever. But now it's kind of like, and now it's almost like we sort of need this sort of, you know, almost like back in the day with like a band like Candiria, where you would never think that like, you know, jazz and fucking hardcore, whatever <laughs> fucking mix. I love Candiria. Oh Dude, my God. Here. You know, but I remember when I first heard it, I was just like, all right, like that just fucking blew my mind. But it's like now with, with this, it's like we're seeing that next evolution, you know, because now in a weird way, it's almost not just new metal anymore. It's this next evolution of that, you know. That, you that, that, that's what I call it. trap metal. That's what I yeah. try to call trap metal. Like I feel like trap metal is the new wave of, of hip hop flows and essence from, you know, obviously it derives from the old school southern drum of the way they did the hip, the hip hop drum, you know what I'm saying? Right. And the old school Southern swing with the, with the rap, with the scats. And with that made a new wave, just like how the old school version of boom bap hip hop inspired new metal with the flows and the drops and the breaks. Now it's like a whole new wave, you know, and it's the new, it's the new wave. It's still new, you know, it, <laughs> right. it, 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 it's still there. You know what I mean? Like, and that's why, like, that's why I still call it new metal, trap metal, rap core, thug core, how are the, However you want to look at it, bro. Listen, bro. And there's so many ways to skin this cat. Let's be real. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I think Concrete Dream, and I, I try to pay homage to both cultures constantly and continuously pay homage to new metal because at the end of the day, that's where this really, really came from. And I feel like the bands that do that, which are the bands, some of the bands I've mentioned, are the ones that are mad successful because that's it's a universal sound. It already caught the world. You guys remember, this shit was a world sound. Yeah. yeah. It was a... Like, go to Japan, you know, go to you know, the middle of Japan, go to the middle of Spain, middle of Italy. This shit was, like, huge, you know, especially in Brazil. Big ups to Brazil. Our, our huge fan base, our, a lot of our supporters are from Brazil. Nice. You know, and I feel like we just got to push it, man. We, we, we got to push it. We got to push it. We need we need um everybody to push it. Big ups to Tet Shark. That's another band that's pushing it. Yeah, great band. You know what I'm saying? I'm big yeah. up. They, they, we, we actually played their first tour, their first New York City show. We oh, are nice. big up to them at St. Vitus. They got the diamond and Josh is my people. The drummer that's my homie. Like, you know, we we I've been on this. You know what I'm saying? I, I've been on this, and um, I'm never gonna leave it. I don't care. I believe in it. I think that's why a lot of people fuck with us. And um, I really want I really want you guys to appreciate this album, the video that's about to drop. The amnesia video is coming out soon, and we're gonna go in the studio with um the drummer from Fire from the Gods, Rich, end of August. So there's gonna be a new single. And I got something really cool in the works. I got a remix in the works that I'm not going to leak. It's going to be a trap metal, new metal remix. Um, it's going to be a cover, like, but we're remixing it. It's going to be dope. Right. Sub Noise is known for that. And um, I'm doing something different. It's never been done. So look out for that. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, man. Well, man, this has been a fantastic conversation. Uh, as we as we wrap up, man, what's the best way for people to check out Concrete Dream to keep up with you guys and uh, you know Instagram, oh, yeah, Facebook, man. all that good stuff? We actually have this really cool website. Big up to my guitar player JFK for putting it together and his brother. Um, it's ConcreteDreamBand.com. So that's ConcreteDreamBand.com, and then it's also on Instagram as the most biggest way to follow us, which is Concrete underscore Dream underscore. You know, we on there all the time. My drummer runs the page. We're always doing funny <laughs> shit, posting crazy shit. Um, keep up with our shows. We have our show July 13th and um, in Newark at QXT's, a legendary club in Jersey. You know QXT's. Yeah. Um, so we, big ups to QXT's for putting us on. It's our first show there. And it's actually a new metal night. Big oh, ups nice. to that new metal band um, for putting us on that show. And um, they're a dope new metal band that covers everybody. All they cover Power Fifty Five. They cover everybody. Oh, nice! So big ups to them, and they put us on, and they be bringing a big crowd out. Um, so look out for that. 
And, you know, we about to drop this album tomorrow. Go check that out. Um, 6923, it was all a dream. On Suburban Noise, SRH, yeah. what up? Kevin Zinger, Regime Music, all my Suburban Noise family, West Coast, East Coast, we out here. Whoop, whoop. All my juggalos be out here. <laughs> we, 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 we doing this shit, man. We doing this shit. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremiah. Thanks, man. Thanks, appreciate dude. You. Peace. One, Take care. Good.